not-for-profits are used to doing huge things with nothing. We never have enough people, we never have enough money, we usually don't even have enough time. <laughs> so um, urgent crisis management or tackling major diseases um, with zero. And we're super creative and effective. There are some great managers in the not-for-profit world and I just think it's time they had their due. I think maybe the most surprising is the finance chapter. I think um, people just assume that not-for-profit um, means we're all broke and don't know how to add properly. Um, and um, <clears throat> I actually think that um, well-managed not-for-profits have a lot to teach for-profits about financial management. So for example, for-profits, when they do their financial filings, lump together SG&A. It's one big number, sales, general, and admin. Gigantic number. And for us, we have to break down everything. Everything is line item. So I can tell you what the Red Cross spent last year on postage. Um, and then it's also made public. So we live in a glass house, and you can see like every little flaw. It's like living in front of a 10x mirror all day long. I would say most sticky might be the chapter on, on brands, uh, and that's for not-for-profits um, and also for-profits. So um, I like to say about the brand, you, you've got to stick to and you've got to really take ownership of one of the five. Uh, if you can get more than one, that's awesome, but one, at least one of the five. So that means uh, first, the only, faster, better, or cheaper. If your brand isn't claiming ownership, staking the ground on one of those things, you're screwed, you're toast. Then what are you? Um, you've got to be one of those five. And, and I hope that's the stickiest. I mean, that's the thing that not-for-profits and for-profits should be asking themselves all the time. Which one is it? How are we doing? I think BP should hire, for example, Daryl Hammond from Kaboom to come run operations. Because anybody who can build a thousand playgrounds in a thousand days really knows ops. I mean, that's an A-list construction company. I think they should, that BP should hire Siobhan Walsh from Concern Worldwide, who just finished building in seven weeks a camp for 3,000 people in Haiti. Seven weeks on just an empty plot of land, 3,000 people. Um, clearly she knows a lot about overseeing partnerships and making the left hand actually talk to the right hand, right? Or Zainab Salbi from Women From an International, um, maybe she should be brought in to like run public affairs because Women From an International works in former war-torn countries, you know, in places where rape, poverty, illiteracy, lack of food, clean water is the norm. And um, so she's used to handling those kinds of situations. These types of people should be called on. I've heard lots of calls, bring in the National Guard, have the government take it over, change the CEO at BP. And I think that they're ignoring some of the best leadership in the country, which is bring in some not-for-profit leaders that are really good. We are very fast and flexible. So we've been listening, we hear them, we change stuff, stuff up. We're not afraid to drop programs or drop sponsors um, that don't make sense. Uh, we turn a dime. So we responded very quickly to the Chris Brown Rihanna incident, very quickly to the tsunami. Um, we haven't been so quick on the Gulf oil spill, but we're about to do something very big and very cool on it and meaningful. Um, and we really, we live the technology. So um, I get frustrated when I see other youth organizations talk about like, youth empowerment and um, you know youth leadership training programs and I don't think you need to train these kids to be leaders I think we need to get out of their way um, you know their idea of change is come up with an idea throw it up on Facebook and within 20 minutes 40 of your friends want to do it with you they don't need like our wonky training at the Hilton to teach them how to do that um, they need us to support them so it's a different this generation is different they have different technology and um, Organizations who are going to succeed in this space um, need to listen more. I think two things. One is to say very, very focused on your purpose and that your purpose should be something measurable. So we know our entire purpose is this year 1.2 million kids taking action offline as a result of us and next year it's 2 million kids taking action offline. There's everything we do is, now does that, does that help that purpose? And if not, we're not doing it. Everything is focused. So to stay very, very focused, we suffer from mission creep all the time in the not-for-profit space, and we don't have the money now to be playing with stuff that doesn't fit our purpose. So that's one thing, is stay very, very focused on your purpose. And the other thing is to look at diversified revenue streams. Um, but to look at them 
in measurement against that purpose. So um, lately there has been the trend of, you know, start a business, monetize something, you know, be a social entrepreneur. I think that's hogwash. Um, I think it's very sexy, but um, some organizations shouldn't be doing that. If you've got three people in your office, don't start a business on the side. Then you're running two companies with only three people. Um, if that other business is not, is just fundraising and doesn't actually reinforce your brand or your purpose, you've just walked into another crazy fundraising quagmire. So um, I think I think it's a little bit like the shiny new toy, and it's a little moth the flame to just put as many cliches in there as possible, um, uh, and it's dangerous. So I think uh, diversify your revenue stream, but it needs to make sense and, and match your purpose.